Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to another Game Maker tutorial. This is part 17, I think. I'm actually not even entirely sure. Yeah, I think it's part 17 to my RPG basic series. We're getting a lot of videos, mostly because I'm trying to do shorter videos, uh, so I don't overload you with a bunch of information in a single video. They're shorter clipped up into smaller pieces so in this video what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding well we're going to be making the stamina actually do something because right now we have stamina but it doesn't do anything so we're gonna make it so that when our player dashes it uses the stamina we're also going to fix an error message that uh, can possibly pop up right now in the game some of you have sent it to me. I was able to reproduce the error myself, and it's a pretty simple fix. So we'll be fixing that. So let's jump right in and do those two things. Uh, if we get those done and we're not very far in time-wise, then we might also do a few other things. But just in case, I won't mention those. Let's just uh, start with the first thing we need to do. So very first, let's fix the error message because that's probably frustrating for some of you. I don't know if I'll be able to uh, reproduce it. I'll try really quick, but let's see if we can. Um, so basically, the error it happens when, whoops, okay, when you get a slime down to one HP, it damages you, and then you hit it and kill it. One, two, damage hit. Dang it! I can't. I can't it's really hard to reproduce. hard to get this error to happen oh and now I kill stuff in two hits so dang it that was way bad okay one two ah dang it freak so yeah basically what happens is the slime uh, creates a damage object but then before the damage objects hits you you kill the slime so the slime's damage object exists, but the slime doesn't exist anymore. The damage object's creator is the slime that no longer exists now. And when it calculates the knockback for the player, it uses the creator, but the creator doesn't exist. So you get an error message. So what we want to do is inside of our damage object, when we're colliding with either a player or it doesn't matter when we're colliding with either a player or a life form parent we want to make sure that the creator exists before we calculate the direction so what we're going to do is we're going to say if instance exists creator creator then we're going to calculate the distance from uh, or the direction is going to be calculated using the creator's x and our target's x, whatever we're damaging. Else, we're just going to calculate the direction. In fact, just copy this right here. Copy this down. If the creator doesn't exist, we're just going to go from our x position to the other instance's x position. So we're just going to go x y other x other y that way we still calculate a direction but if the creator doesn't exist then we can do it so copy this right here come into the player where we damage the player this is called damage all life forms it should be called damage the player and we're going to paste this over the var der equals point direction creator x creator y so we're just going to replace that right there everything else should stay the same so there you go that fixes that error message that could pop up that was potential and those kind of error messages are really common it's really common to try and access an instance inside of the room or an object inside of the room that no longer exists some of you have been get, have been getting that error message with your view when the player dies you need to make sure that you check to make sure that the player instance exists before you f before you try and follow it so 
now that we've got that error message fixed, um, let's add in let's add in the stamina for dashing. So let's go into the player state, go into the move state. Inside of here, uh, some of you have already done this. It's funny because some of the videos that I'm doing, some of you are ahead now. You've passed me. I've had to slow down the last week because, especially this week, I'm not going to be uploading as many videos because I have to work on Grain War. So I've got to get some stuff done on it because I wasn't able to get a lot done last week with my brother getting married and having family over and stuff. It was... That's why I didn't do a lot of videos last week either. So anyways, let's get back into it. So the dash key, uh, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to check to make sure the player has a certain amount of stamina in order to be able to dash. So if dash key and uh, player, let's see, what do I call it? Object player stats dot stamina is greater than or equal to five. We'll make it take five stamina in order to dash. Then we're gonna subtract from the stamina. Stamina minus equals five. Pretty simple, right? If you wanted, you could move this into a macro. I think we already used macros, right? We've got up, down, left, and right. We could call this dash underscore cost and set it to five. So create a macro called dash underscore cost and then use that here. Dash cost, dash cost. That is just makes our code more readable and makes it easier to change that later if we decide to play around with uh, variables for how much we want the dash to cost. So we have, we have 10 stamina so we should be able to dash twice uh, stamina. Oh, whoops. My bad. So let me, I'm going to actually show that error message again, uh, because a lot of you are still learning how to debug error messages. So it's good practice. So this error message says, uh, fatal error in action number one. So the first action for the step event for the player, object player, it's variable get stamina. So it's trying to get the stamina variable inside of the script move state but it can't find it that's why we're getting an error it's because it can't there's an execution error when it tries to get the variable stamina so we know where this is though right it's line seven of our script move state and it's stamina so let's abort go to the script move state come to line seven right here stamina what did i do well i forgot to put the object player stats before that because the player object doesn't actually have a stamina variable it's inside of the player's stats object so that was the mistake that I made so let's run this again good learning experience there and we should be able to dash now we only have five stamina dash again and now we can't dash anymore now that's cool that it uses the stamina to dash, but it's annoying that we can't that we can't uh, get it back, that it doesn't recharge. What should happen is, oh, we get two more stamina. Woohoo! So useless. Can't even use that to dash. What should happen is it should recharge after a certain amount of time. So what we're gonna do is we're going to give the player. Well, uh, we can do this two ways. We can either give the player an alarm. Well, there's thousands of ways to do this, but these are the first two that come to mind. We can give the player an alarm event on like alarm one that controls the dashing or the stamina recharge. So the stamina recharges um, after a certain time frame after dashing. Or we can also do it inside of the player stats object. And I think I want to do it inside of the player stats object because it makes sense logically that a stat regeneration alarm would be inside of the stats object. It just makes more sense to do that. So we're going to add an event 
add an alarm, alarm zero. We're going to drag over a code action, but we're not actually going to do anything inside of this alarm. I'm just going to say uh, stamina regen alarm. Just going to name it so we know what this alarm is for. Now, inside of the step event for the player, or sorry, for the player stats object, we're going to put stamina regen. We're going to say if stamina is less than max stamina and alarm zero is less than or equal to, well, actually, we can just do equals equals. And alarm zero is equals to negative one. Stamina plus plus. We'll just add one to it every step. So it'll recharge really fast once the time frame of waiting is done. It will recharge quite quickly. But it'll have to wait for a little while before it does that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set that alarm when our player moves. So right here when we do the dash cost, we're going to set the uh, alarm for the stamina regeneration. So object player stats, and this is inside the script move state, dot stamina equals, sorry, object player stats dot alarm zero equals now we can set this alarm to whatever we want. Um, if we do room speed, that will be exactly one second because it will be 30 steps, which is the speed of the room. So it will be one second. Um, okay, we get another error message here. You can see variable get max stamin. So it's a typo. It's trying to get this variable, but it can't find it. And you can see that I have a typo there. Uh, so stamina, let's go into the play object player stats. Whoops, inside of the step event. Stamina, right there. Fix that. Save and run the game one more time. And let's see how this goes now. Okay, we can dash, and then if we wait long enough, it recharges. But we can't just spam dash now. We can dash twice before we have to wait for it to recharge. So that's pretty cool. Can't just spam dashing now. We actually have to think about it a little bit. Got the stamina regen. So that's all I'm going to do for tonight. Um, I, I will be doing another. Uh, a lot of you have been asking about my random level generation series. I will be doing another video because I've had some really good ideas from you guys, some really good requests. So I'm going to do one more video or maybe more than one more, but I'm going to do another video for sure on that um, this week. And I'll do another video on this as well this week, but it won't be every day. So... Not that there's a lot more time this week to do two more videos, but I will do two more. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this. If you liked it, if it helped you, be sure and give it a thumbs up. Like it. I really appreciate that. Share it on Twitter. Share it with your friends. Um, get them started on this series. If they've wanted to build games before, send them to this series because it's a good place to start for people. And uh, it's also kind of cool because it does more than a lot of the other tutorial series that I see out there. In fact, I could have packaged this series up as probably a Udemy course, made it a little bit uh, more formal than it is. It's a little bit low key right now, but I could have made it a little more formal and packaged it up as a Udemy course, but I decided I wanted to do it free for you guys. Um, so, and I think it's been a good thing for you guys to have that. And I will do more Udemy courses and maybe some more advanced ones too. So if that's something that you're interested in. Anyways, I will talk to you guys later. Thank you so much.